My name is Jay, as you guys know, and today I'm here with Venkata and we're solving a SQL interview question. I'm Sai Kumar, Venkata. So I currently work as a lead data analyst at Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina. And I prior, uh, prior to that, I worked as a data scientist at Lego. And then I'm happy to solve this question and then uh, learn from Jay. Let's get started. The first question is called user experience percentage. And this is actually a question that I feel like is really good. I remember writing it uh, based on a couple other like questions that we got from LinkedIn. And so essentially what it is, is given a table called user experiences, write a query to determine the percentage of users that held the title of data analyst immediately before holding the title of data scientist. Uh, we're also defining immediate because we want to find the ones that have jumped from becoming a data analyst to a data scientist. And uh, it's really, this is a great question because it's a very common schema that you would see if you're querying data for from LinkedIn or any kind of resume building site. And kind of how would you approach this question to start out? I see that uh, we have five columns. ID is like primary key and then user ID, position name, start date and end date. The output is percentage and float. So from my initial thoughts I have, so I do have a few clarifying questions. So the first one would be, uh, here we are finding the percentage of uh, employees who have data analyst title before the data scientist title. But then there's a, there's a possibility of a person having, let's say myself, I have a lead data analyst title. A person can now junior data science analyst or data analyst too. So would you want me to handle those cases or like should I just stick up onto data analyst. Same with the data scientist too. Should I see you senior data scientist or product data scientist, junior data scientist? Let's assume that the data has been cleaned and they've all been classified. The other question that I have is coming to position names. I'm guessing because that's where the uh, data analyst and data scientist uh, values would be. Let's say because of some user error, uh, like system error or from data entry error, if the position name is missing for a user, would you want me to count that uh, to calculate the percentage or would you want me to remove it from the calculation? Totally remove, yeah. So if it doesn't say data analyst or data scientist exactly, then uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Thank you for the clarification. I'll get started. I would start with user experiences table. And then since we need the user ID, I would select the user ID. Since the question says that we need data analyst immediately before data scientist, the first thing that comes to my mind is lag function. I would use lag function on the position name. Since we want it to be immediate, I would use one. Continue, I would partition by user ID because we want to know for the uh, like for one user, if uh, they have data analyst title before data scientist title. I guess I want to interrupt you and just kind of ask you for how are you approaching this from like a like you know high level perspective first before we're jumping into code. So to start with, uh, I see that we need to find number of uh, percentage of users who has data analyst title before data scientist title. Since I see that their start date and end date and position name, every record must be having one title. So in order to compare between current record and previous record, my first instinct is to get the previous title into a different column. And then uh, at high level, based on that, I'll be calculating the percentage of users. Now that I have two different columns is what I have in, uh, in mind, like current title and previous title uh, next to each other. Calculating percentage would be easier then. So that's my thought process for now. So since I partition by user ID, I would also order by start date uh, because like we need to know if that happened before, if data analyst happened before data scientist and as previous title and I would also make this an upper into uppercase because there might be data entry errors. I got the previous title. I would also the position. Let me also change the uppercase just so that everything stays consistent. All right. So you ran it, but you're looking to just look at the output, right? Yeah, exactly. Now that I know this user ID one, there are no errors as of now. To continue with, I'll store this as CTE and then let me call it. Mm. Now I got the data for user IDs and then previous title is equal to change it to uppercase. It has to be data analyst and count of distinct user ID. This would give me the uh, count of users uh, data analyst as the previous title. And in the denominator, I would be using select count of distinct user ID. 
from the initial table since from our initial discussions we would have want to exclude the users with who doesn't have the user ids so i would exclude them not null position name it can be blank also i would want to ignore those two since it's a integer division let me use 1.0 just to make, convert it to decimal rename it as see the output name it has to be percentage previous title has to be data analyst and current position data scientist before check running the query i would like to check everything i selected user id and then to get previous title so one thing i could think of is to uh, there might be trailing and leading spaces i would like to remove those so i want to trim those first before using it in the query so that there won't be any inconsistencies in the data another thing that i could think of is because we are calculating a percentage here let me add Now, there's a possibility of denominator becoming zero, and then uh, it might be a problem if the denominator is zero. So let me use null if to or the query to run if the denominator is zero. Let's say if the table is empty, the query shouldn't get give us an error, whereas it should give us null value. So I would use null if previous title data where previous title is data analyst and current position is data scientist. This looks good to me. Nice. Yes. Yep. Okay. Looks like it passes that. Can you try submitting the solution? Nice. Okay. Congrats. All right. So my initial kind of opinion on this is I one is like I find it really interesting when people put uh, sub queries inside of select statements. I've never done that, <laughs> but it's just a like general, you know subjective kind of like how you want to write the query but yeah so what did you think of the question and what kind of feedback do you initially have on like tackling it the question looked really interesting whereas because it can be used uh, in a this the output of the query of uh, this query can be used in lot of ways in improving the business for any company tricky question to be honest like you should understand uh, what kind of functions to use and then there are a lot of edge cases that can happen uh, in, in this kind of questions like say as i mentioned the data inconsistencies like in the titles or null values in the start date or null values in the position name those were my initial thoughts of this query like say but when you divide the question into smaller chunks and then think of it it shouldn't be a problem yeah i really like it because i think it's showcasing also this is what i would call a medium to harder sql question because you have to do a couple things right you have to do sub query you have to understand how partitions work and then you also have to solve for a few edge cases that you highlighted right around the actual trimming and like specific case the case of the actual words right so case sensitivity But yeah, I mean, good job, Nikata, and thank you, thank you. Do you have any feedback for me? My feedback from an interviewing point of view is it's helpful to describe, uh, as I said before, kind of write like how you're going to tackle a question, then start writing code, and then even commenting on certain areas make it makes it look a little cleaner. I would say so. Just, this is going to get us X, Y, Z. We're doing this because of sort of a thing. I like that kind of you know talking as you're coding because it kind of helps explain your thought process. I know you're kind of doing it, but kind of almost making a story out of it is generally even more helpful. I think. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. So one more kind of question I have for you is, what do you think the reasoning behind running this kind of query would be in a business like LinkedIn? or some sort of recruiting this as well and how does it kind of tie into their goal that's a great question to to start with my uh, initial thoughts were employees trans uh, like transitioning from data analyst to data scientist and then if we know how many percentage of the employees are doing this so we get a understanding that like there's a, there are like 50% of employees transitioning from data analyst to data scientist that tells that to transition to data scientist position maybe data analyst is the getting into data analysis is the key first that helps the organization in planning like uh, starting a training program or uh, giving opportunities to employees uh, to learn the skills that's uh, first thing that uh, i can think of another thing that i could think of is also from the recruiting point of view so let's say the company's goals are uh, moving towards data science projects and then maybe while hiring for data analyst the recruiter might also look for the people who have strong background in data analyst but also basic fundamentals in data science that could help uh, recruiting processes make it easier in future like say when they want to hire data scientists they don't have to hire again because these data analyst basic skills they could just train them and then convert them to data scientist or hire an instructor or something and then 
make them tra- make the transition uh, seamless, which saves time and money for the organizations. I would agree. I think one more thing I would think about is the way to understand someone's career progression as well. Like some of the most interesting analytics I wanted to see is how many people transitioned from data analyst to data scientist or data analyst to let's say senior data analyst and also understanding stuff around like salary and data analytics around that. So that's maybe from a more personal perspective. I would say that if I'm also linked in, I would be able to showcase this kind of career progression in a way that recruiters would also be interested in who is the most motivated and like who has like this kind of background, but is in this position. So let's say that we want to hire like a data product manager. I'd want to know every data science, like every product manager, currently a product manager, but has a data science, data analytics. And that combination is like a very specific role that I do. Yeah, that's definitely one part. Of it. Like it makes hiring process or like uh, career transitions a lot easier with all these training programs and then uh, other things. And one thing that I would also do is if there's any employee that's transitioning from data scientist position to data analyst position, because we can analyze uh, What's the reason? Because data scientist, if you take one company, the data scientist role might be more advanced than data analyst. But if there's an employee or if there are multiple employees who, who are transitioning from a higher level to a lower level, so we might have to find out the reasons. Is it because of job satisfaction or if it's because of personal choice or is it because of the workload? That might be interesting thing to uh, analyze. If you guys are looking to tackle more questions like this, check out the SQL questions on interview query. We'll add a link below so that you can check it out. You can also check out the other answers here in the comments section of looking at how they also submitted the question, whether in MySQL, Pandas, or R. Thank you for the opportunity.